so then we'll come up with a new hypothesis and we'll do a slightly different take on the experiment. Then there's just some more general questions that y'all can answer. But, um, so what I'd like for us to do is go ahead and get these cut out and um, get the roly poly separated out and then we can maybe talk through the first part of the lab while y'all are observing them and that'll help pass that first 10 minutes worth of time as well. So, um, so you'll need two filters and there are some scissors here but they're kind of scattered up and down the table as well. Yep. These filters can be tricky to separate. Do y'all need a pencil or? I have a pencil. Okay. Like she's tracing hers on the outside, that's fine. Just, just try to keep a little bit inside that because that wall is a little bit thick. I haven't checked these yet today. Are there timers out yet in front of y'all? No. Y'all timer. that we are using are actually um, not the pill bugs, they are the sow bugs. And when you get a look at these, you know what I'm talking about. You know, the roly polies that we typically find in the southeast kind of have a gray, shiny shell. Mm -hmm. And when you touch them, they curl up in a ball. Whereas these do not. They might freeze, you know. Um, when you dump them into the glass, oh, you, get some glass jars. Um, you might see them flip upside down and you think that they're dead and sometimes they stay there for quite a few minutes just like the other ones do when they curl up in a ball. Um, but actually, um, they're, they're just plain, plain dead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My um, dog hates them. He would touch them and think they're dead and they'll start um, moving around and he'll start barking and petting them again. Yeah, and they're, they're kind of all over the place. So, um, anyway, so those are just things, you know, initially for you to observe since, I mean, these are the guys that we will be using, basically. I uh, cut my little short. Yeah, and it's okay. I mean, if, if one of you gets a really good one, let me know, because I want to make a template <laughs> from it. I guess we didn't save the one Nikki had. Mm. So once you get two of them made, then um, go ahead and what you'll want to do is separate out ten of the roly polies and um, if you want to wear gloves, there are some over here. how this lid has holes and so it tends to dry out pretty quick. Maybe I should put some foil or something over it, but this one I can seal off. I don't have to leave it open. So I think that um, they get dried out pretty quickly. And the heat on in particular, the heat or the air, it's on a lot. Well, perfect circles are not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, with if we can get a good template, then um, we will be able to use that. What I'll ask y'all to do um, when you get started on your experiment is to um, 
apply your own filter paper because of the number of repetitions that you're doing. Can you have yours turn out? I had one, but it didn't. I don't think it did well. It's pretty close. Let me see yours. Oh. I, f I felt like I needed to um, have a, one of those compass. Yeah. <laughs> little, or their protractors, you know. Yeah. Like a it's a circle. compass, yeah. 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 So. It's pretty good. I mean, for what we're doing today, it's fine. Alright, so y'all can get 10 out of that large one. And again, if you want to wear gloves, they're over there on the side. Okay, so we're leaving one side or both sides with a coffee filter? Both sides will have a coffee filter because that's, that's a constant. One will have water, the other one. But don't put any water in yet because you're just going to watch them in their glass jar for about 10 minutes. And do I need to wear gloves? I mean, no. Gloves From what I've read, you know, they don't know of any diseases or anything. I need to carry. find 10? Oh, I see. Oh, there's a bunch. They're just in and around okay. the paper towel. So don't just set the paper towel out. Just lift it up and then put them in that beaker. Put them in the beaker? Yeah, those beakers there. So you can just watch it. Should be pretty easy to catch them. And oh no, they're not. You get used to, to it. squeeze them. I don't want to kill them. <laughs> you kind of catch it more like this rather than like this. Like, like with your whole, like all your fingers. Scissors work. Were they pretty good? Mm -hmm. Clean up. I mean, they're brand new. Y'all the first ones ever used. there like playing dead. Yeah. Yes, he's playing dead. It's not too terrible. Kind of dirt mostly for template. Could be worse. Once she gets hers, we'll start reading and we'll just read it together. You can start watching and making notes. Oh, and set your timer on for 10 minutes. One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. They're all on top of each other. One, two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, um, set your timer for 10 minutes, and you'll just have to watch it go up for 10. Okay, how do I set this timer? Well, there's an on-off button. Mm -hmm. Did it come on? Oh, it came on. Okay, and then hit start. That's it. Okay. So if you want, some people will, um, you know, put these on a white piece of paper to mm -hmm. see them better. Yeah. <laughs> Very clever. I mean, and obviously you'll have that when you set your experiment up. Okay. Okay. But if you, uh, is this your lid? Yeah. So, um, so if you have your piece of paper in front of you, maybe just occasionally jot down some notes as to what you're seeing. Okay. Like, like right now, what are you seeing? I see, uh, I don't know, aggressive behavior. Like they're, how? What makes you think they're being aggressive? Uh, they're moving quickly. Okay. And uh, they're on top of each other. Okay. What are you seeing, Kendra? Yeah, the same thing. They tend to walk over each other. The larger ones tend to seem, I don't know, bunched together, but they continuously go around in a circular pattern, um, pattern of course, because the beak is there. Oh, hers aren't. Oh, That's why it's interesting to compare, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, the two different groups. They stay toward the edge and they just continue. Because, like, hers to me just look like they're just trying to escape. <laughs> <laughs> How do I get out of here? Yeah. So, okay, so go ahead and make some notes on um, page S2. Okay, and once I'll do that, we'll start going through the worksheet. And these are saw bugs? Sow. Sow? S O W. Oh, like a cow. Like a pig. Like a pig. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not from the country. <laughs> They'll jump together and they're just like, okay, now you go, and but they all fall down because someone's moving from the back. I mean, from the bottom. Yeah, Nikki just she would just watch them. I mean, she just thought they were so interesting. I mean, like these are like starting to tear each other up right here. Yeah. I mean, hers are like literally like wrestling with each other. <laughs> But do you see how they are flatter and they're not as shiny mm -hmm. as the ones we have here? I, I don't know the difference between the two. I mean, I'll take your word for it, but I... All right, then. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I guess it's been a while since I've looked at one. They look um, kind of the same and to some me. Some of them, like she's saying, some of well, in my mom's house, they are really gray, really, really gray. And I remember they just cut open the ball, but then... I don't know, it's crazy. Some of them actually roll yeah. while they're in the ball. Yeah. And some of them just come out the ball and run off. Yeah, like these are not from our area. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, let's go through um, the first page. So it starts off defining um, animal behavior, the science of animal behavior. And so that is ethology. Okay. Science of animal behavior, according to this. 
So it says many behaviors involve the movements of an animal within its environment. In this lab, you will investigate some innate, inherited, as opposed to learned behaviors. So now it's going to give you some definitions that, again, unless you're going to use this in your actual experiment, um, you don't necessarily have to, to talk about it in your paper, but it's something that they chose to talk about for this particular experiment. But it says, orientation is the process by which animals position themselves with respect to spatial features of their environment. Okay. So if you orient in a certain way, maybe you face something or turn away from it. So it says taxis involves the turning of an animal's body relative to a stimulus. The animal may turn away from, toward, perpendicular to, etc. the stimulus. The turning may or may not be followed by a movement of an animal in relation to the stimulus. So it may just turn its body away from the stimulus but may not walk away, for example. Um, kinesis is the random turning or movement of an animal in relation to a stimulus. And these are really difficult to tell the difference. So taxis is kind of like a response, you know, in, you know a response to a stimulus, whereas kinesis is more, more random. And so it makes it really difficult. So that's why I don't want y'all to get like bogged down by this, mm -hmm. you know, but, but you know, this is actually a pretty good worksheet. So. Consider the following experiment. A researcher places a dead, rotting mouse in the center of a test surface, one square meter. The, the researcher then places a carrion beetle, an insect that eats dead animal tissue, somewhere on the test surface and then observes. Okay, So you've got this one meter square test area, put a, a mouse in the middle, and then you put these beetles that eat decaying matter in there with it. Okay. The beetle crawls forward for three seconds, turns, and crawls in a different direction for three seconds, and continues in this manner. So it kind of goes one direction, turns, goes again, turns. So every three seconds it turns while it's walking. The researcher concludes that the beetle is moving randomly in relation to the dead mouse. Continued observation reveals that the beetle crawls faster and covers more ground when it happens to turn in the direction of the dead mouse. In addition, the beetle crawls slowly and covers less ground when it happens to crawl away from the mouse. In this way, the beetle's random movements will bring it to the dead mouse, at which point other behavior patterns such as feeding will take over. So maybe the turning was random, but he noticed it moved more quickly as it was approaching the dead mouse and more slowly when it was going away. Again, I'm not real worried about that, but again, that's the purpose of this topic, so we're going to keep reading through it. Agnostic behaviors are aggressive or submissive displays. Common example is a cat's response to an aggressive dog. The cat fluff its, fluffs its fur and stands sideways to the dog. This makes the cat appear larger and stronger than it really is. Okay. Alright, so we've already started this observation. So you've got ten isopods in a beaker, and so it, it starts describing at the very bottom what what these isopods are. So this is the same type of information you would want to include. You're not limited to this. It can be different information in your own introduction. So it starts introducing these bugs to you. Terrestrial isopods are land-dwelling crustaceans, commonly known as sow bugs, and it gives you the scientific name, Porcelio labus, and pill bugs, Armadillidium, Vulgari. I'm sure I didn't pronounce that correctly, but um, pill bugs are the ones that look like little armadillos when they roll up. Mm -hmm. And we've got the sow bugs. And then it says, they may have other common names including roly polies, potato bugs, and wood lice. No relation to body lice. So a lot of the articles that you'll read will use any of these names. So again, when you're searching through Galileo or through um, you know, the, Gal the Google Scholar, you can type in any of these names. You can type in wood lice, roly polies, peel bugs, sow bugs, okay. or the scientific name. But I, I would probably, these are from this company, so we have the Porcelio. I don't know if the species is exactly the same, but the genus, it says, is supposed to be Porcelio. 
Did you have a question, Hillary? Okay. So it says that these are related to lobsters, crabs, shrimp, and terrestrial isopods. Um, I'm sorry. They're related to those things, but they breed with gills, which must remain moist. So that's why you see me spraying them. Oh, okay. So historically, you know, they think that um, they're related to, like, I don't know if it would go back so far as, like, the trilobites. And the ones that kind of look like this, but they lived in the ocean, and some of them got to be really big. Mm -hmm. um, but lobsters, all of them that are like gill breathers, because some of these will actually live in the rocks along shorelines and things. And so, um, you know, these still need moisture to breathe, but they've obviously adapted to land. And okay. so um, that's why you find them typically in dark, moist places like under rocks, because usually it's moist under rocks. Mm -hmm and um, wood, wood lice, you know, so you find them maybe eating on the decaying wood and that sort of thing. Sometimes uh, I guess you tend to see them with termites. Do you sometimes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it says, although similar in size, color, and life cycle, pill bugs and sow bugs are different animals. When threatened, pill bugs curl up in a tight ball for protection. That's what you're seeing here, the second one. You see how it's got a little bit of reflection on it? It's mm -hmm. a little bit shinier. While sow bugs either flee or remain perfectly still, appearing to be dead. And then that's just a picture. But some of them, as you dropped them in, they landed on their back. And they, they didn't move. They didn't have yeah, one doing that? Yeah, two actually. But are they, yeah, some of them are like really still. And some of them will actually stay on their back for a really long time. And you can tell they're still alive because they're moving their antennas, but they're still staying flat. Some of them don't move at all, though. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, literally, we would watch them and we'd be like... Yeah, <laughs> mine have dead. really chilled out in what has <laughs> it been, like, ten minutes. So go ahead and make another observation. Like, if, if yours are still moving a whole lot, okay. or are they moving more slowly? Whatever you want to write down. Because it says, observe them for 10 minutes. Your goal is to observe their undisturbed behavior, so do not bump the container. As you observe, make notes on their movements. It says, do they, continu do they move continuously or do they settle down between periods of movement? Hers are still moving around a good bit. There's only a couple that are actually... Yeah, but they were all frantically moving at a much faster pace. Right, they've slowed pace. down. Yeah, they've slowed down. So, like, if they touch each other, what do they do? They get a little bit animated again. I'll check my email a little bit and see if Josh emails me back. Okay, so it's going to ask you to um, describe any antagonistic behavior in step two, and then I'm not worried about step three where it talks about taxis or kinesis. Oh, yours are really settling down now. Look at them. Are yours all clumped together now? No? Hers just did. I mean, all of a sudden. It's like all of them are like on one corner, of, well, not corner, but one yeah. side. You have like most of them, like, I would say at least. Well, now it's five. They'll just sit there and lay down. Do you have the remaining so many going around? 